Hello, everybody. Happy Tunes Day. Hope you're doing well, staying safe. We're going to be doing these for a few more weeks this way, so it's really cool to be trying to do uh, Tunes Day live with you. So the song that I've selected for Tunes Day this week is really something that I consider to be a, an unappreciated gem of the musical world. But there's a, there's a topic, there's an idea behind it, because this can apply to any song that I want to teach you the idea first. And that idea is the idea of deep listening. And that the technique of like targeting your ears to a very specific part. Sometimes when we listen, we do real passive listening. We, we listen to, to music maybe while we're doing homework, we're studying, we're cleaning, we're just hanging out. But sometimes I wanna encourage you to do a more active type of listening, something that's really deep listening. So what I wanna do today is give you a song and some techniques at the same time to do that type of thing. And you may have heard me say this before, that hearing is what we do with our ears, but listening is what we do with our brains. So it's getting that brain involved in the listening as we listen to these tunes today. So the song that I've selected is uh, by Fairport Convention. It's called Who Knows Where the Time Goes from 1969. The album is 1969 and the album is called the Unhalf Bricking Album. It's this beautiful tune. It's got a, a great vocal, three beautiful verses of, of, um, of music that go on and just a, a really, a, like I said, a beautiful gem of music to, to listen to, okay? So what I want you to do is I'm gonna play this song for you once on the recording. And what I would, I'm asking you to do is to, is to isolate a specific part. The first time you list, listen to this tune, if it's your very first time, it may be difficult to do this. But what I'm gonna ask you to do is try to focus only on what the vocalist does in this, right? You can listen to the lyric, you can listen to the shape of the melody that she's gonna sing. Perhaps you're gonna listen to the inflection, where she puts the emphasis on the, on the, the lyric as it goes. But really try to, to hone in on that specific vocal part. Your mind may wander. Good listening means that sometimes your mind goes off and you hear, oh, well that, now I hear this part. Now I hear the drums, now I hear a little, and that's okay. But when that happens, try to come right back, as you think of it, back into the lyric. The other thing I wanna ask you to do, I'm gonna request is look down at the time right now of this, so you can come back to this spot and listen to it again. So instead of listening to it five times together, we'll listen to it one time together, and then you can come back and do these other listenings as we go. So check it out. Here's Who Knows Where the Time Goes by Fairport Convention. Just an enchanting song. Isn't that a great one? Love it. Yeah. So many great lines in the lyric. Something that, I mean, if you want to go back and listen to it again with the lyric, to, to actually read all the lyric with it. There's just some, some really beautiful stuff in there. And my idea would be for you to go back in that recording and now listen to the lead guitar. It probably stuck out for you. And, it, and I didn't try to trick you, but at the beginning, there's no vocal for a good like 20, 30 seconds. And so you're hearing just guitar and you're kind of waiting for another part to come in. And what are your ears doing during that time? Well, if you're, you're anticipating that vocal, when it's gonna come in, you're listening differently than if you go back and listen with just the lead guitar. And I think in that intro in particular, like the rhythm guitar part really stands out. But then once the vocal starts, the lead guitar part really stands out. The drums do a lot later on in the tune. There's some really cool like little hi-hat moments in there when you listen to the drum tech that I think you'll go like, oh wow, what a great little cymbal part. What the bass player does. I mean, that, that's the idea of these multiple listenings is that you go back and just isolate that part or deep listen into that one single timbre and see how it fits together. These layers are beautifully put into this tune. And I guess, you know, just to, to, to tell you a little bit about Sandy Denny so you know who she is and what this is. She wrote this song when she was 19 years old. She was born in 1947 in England. I think it was, the city was Wimbledon, England, actually. And um, she, she was in this band, Fairport Convention, for only a couple of years and then went off and did her own thing in a, in a, and had a solo career for about 10 years or so. She, you can listen to previous versions of this from like the like 1967, when she recorded it for the first time as a demo at her own house. And then she was in a band that was called The Straubs. 
and I'll link all these in the description when I put it on YouTube so you can check them out real easily if you if you want to see them there. Um, but uh, she she tragically passed away in 1978. She had a fall at her own home um, and she died of a brain hemorrhage at, at that point. Um, and, and so her career is really short, but her, her, her music, this tune in particular, is just a beautiful vocal and a beautiful lyric that goes along. She wrote the song, sung it, and, and this version with Fairport Convention is really the gold standard as far as like what we kind of consider to be like English folk music from the late 60s. It was real popular. And uh, there's a lot of great artists that kind of have grown out of, out of some of Sandy Denny's sounds and ideas. Somebody to check out sometime if you like the sound of that. So the next step for you, I would encourage you to listen again, go back and listen to the layers of it. Um, check out some cover versions. Again, in the description of the YouTube video when I, when I post that for you, um, there'll be several that are listed there. It'll be the several versions that Sandy Denny did and several versions of, of covers that other people have done. And again, if you have some time, go and listen to a couple versions of it. Go see how different it was. Especially cool to hear like Sandy Denny do it in 1967, 1968, I believe she did it with the Straubs. And then to hear this version of it only a few years later. There's a version by the jazz singer Nina Simone that is really cool, really plaintive, just very different. And something that is, is worth like exploring, like how these people do, kind of taking that lesson from last week, how these, these tunes get interpreted by different people. And you'll hear those layers. I think if you've done the work of listening to the layers of this original one, it will really be awesome to catch up on, on the, the way other people do it. And then the last thing I would encourage you to do is to go back to a song you already love. Maybe something that is fresh to you, but maybe something that's really old, something that you've always listened to, that you got tired of. Go back and listen to it differently. Focus on maybe like what the drummer does. I remember the first time I went back and listened to um, Michael Jackson's uh, uh, Billie Jean and sp specifically listened to what the drummer did on that tune. I was blown away. I just, I, I, it was like a tune that I'd loved from my childhood, but I listened to it in a different way. That deep listening focused on a singular part and the tune totally changed for me. So I'd encourage you to try and do some of that same thing yourself. All right. That's my tunes day for today. I hope you had fun. Thanks for coming out and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye.